Carlo Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you another one of my paper crafting DIYs that I will be using when I gift some of my baked goods this year. That's one of the things that I really love to do the most is when I am gifting some baked goods, I like to incorporate a handmade paper crafting way of gifting these baked goods. And so today I will be bringing to you a quick and easy and most of all budget friendly way to gift and package some of those cookies or in my case today, fudge. I am making a homemade fudge that I will be gifting to some of my neighbors. Thanksgiving time, I did a pumpkin bread and I did a really neat loaf pan and so many of you loved it. And so this Christmas, so many of you asked if I would make a DIY cookie box and that was what I was planning on bringing to you all anyway, only I was using it, like I said, for some fudge that I will be making. And I do want to uh, clarify, I guess, that yes, my idea of homemade is something that I make here at home. Even if it comes out of a box, I am making it here at home. It is not pre-made. And so I did get some comments the last time about my pumpkin bread because I made the Libby's pumpkin bread that it wasn't homemade, that it was boxed. And in my opinion, potato, potato, tomato, tomato, it is homemade because I made it with my own hands and it wasn't pre-packaged and pre-made. If you wanna make it from scratch, I say go for it, but to me, it's just a lot easier when you have all the ingredients that you need in these amazing boxes that Walmart sells for $4.98. And I know that this is a universal price. This is something that I checked out before I brought you this video because I really wanted to make sure that this was something that everybody could do for the same budget friendly price. And so let's not waste any more time. Let me show you this stinking adorable cookie box, or in my case, like I said, a fudge box that I will be making for all of the fudge that I will be gifting this year. And I'll show you the fudge box that you can get at Walmart right now for $4.98. It's a great buy. Like I've said, I really love crafting with paper because it's so inexpensive and budget friendly to buy. Michaels always has really great buys and sales on all of their scrapbooking paper. They've got a lot of paper packs. I got this Recollections Christmas pack, eight and a half by 11. There's 25 sheets in this. It says it was $4.99. I didn't pay $4.99 for it. I paid $2 for this. This is a pack that I actually used to make one of my gift card holders the other day with. Turned out gorgeous. A 25 sheet pack like this for $2, you can make endless amounts of gift card holders and cookie boxes. This is another paper pack that I also picked up by Recollections. Opened it up already, loving the colors of this. I made a gift card holder using this and I'll be making a fudge box with this as well. To show you, I'll be using this red car with the Christmas tree. This is a 12 by 12 sheet that I got from Hobby Lobby. Couldn't pass it up because it's very similar to the red truck. Love that retro feel. And I'll also be using a black solid piece of cardstock, which is eight and a half by 11. For this project, you don't need any scrapbooking paper or cardstock that's bigger than eight and a half by 11. What you'll need for this project, you don't need any fancy tools. You need a nice good ruler that's elevated. And to score with, if you have one of these old school big pens that has a cover on it like this, this cover makes for a great scoring tool because it's not gonna cut through the paper and it's got this real good edge here that works perfectly when you run it along the ruler for scoring. In the last few paper crafting videos I've done, I've gotten asked a lot about this adhesive roller. Yes, this is a giant size one. This is an adhesive tape glider which is otherwise known as an ATG by Scotch. 
You can get this at Michael's or Joann's. Sometimes they're a bit hard to find. You can also find them on Amazon. I'll link it in the description box below in my Amazon store if you're interested in buying it. I have found that buying the refills on Amazon is a lot less expensive than even buying them at Joann's and Michael's, even using the 50% off coupon. A great alternative to the adhesive tape would be a clear gel tacky glue like this one. This one is by Aileen's. This is a two ounce bottle that I saw that Dollar Tree just started carrying. Typically, Dollar Tree has the gold bottle of Aileen's glue, which is a white glue. And as it is very good, you want a tacky glue that gets tacky quickly and dries quickly. So this is a great alternative. We're gonna start off with the base of the box. And for the base, I'll be using the black cardstock. And you wanna cut this down to an eight and a half by eight and a half inch square. And so because this is an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of cardstock, you only need to cut the length down to eight and a half inches. Once we've got the eight and a half by eight and a half inch square, we're going to score our square two inches in on all four sides. Now to score this, I didn't feel like pulling out my scoring board and because I had this Dollar Tree scoring and poking tool on hand, I just decided to use my cutter. And you can see that if you have one of these cutters, you don't even really need a scoring blade because you can use something to score it instead of having the blade there. So like I said, I'm gonna rotate this on all four sides and score in at two inches, which is gonna leave me with my square looking like this. I'm gonna fold in all four of my scoring lines. Once I've got them folded in, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut in to the slits, one on each side. Rotate it and on the reverse side, I'm gonna cut those same slits in across from each other. I'm gonna fold those flaps in and you should be left with this. When placing the adhesive on these flaps or tabs, you really wanna put it as close to the edge, that scoring edge as you can, because it's gonna give you a nice cleaner fold and it's gonna keep your edges together. And you wanna do that on all four of the flaps. And it really is just as simple as folding your tabs in and placing them on the inside of the box, adhering them to that longer flap there. And there we've just made the base of our box and really it's gonna take you under five minutes to do. Moving on to the cover of our box, I'm going to again cut this sheet down to eight and a half by eight and a half. Now you wanna make sure and keep all of your scraps because these are some bigger size scraps from the black cardstock and this, and these make for great cards. If you layer these using a white gel pen or even a chalk pen, you can make tags or even a gift card. Because this is the lid to our cookie box, we've gotta score this one a bit different because it needs to fit over the base of our box. And so the way we score this is only going to be 1 16th of an inch different than what we did the first box. So we're gonna score this. Here's the two inch mark that we scored our first box at. We're gonna score it at 15 sixteenths, which is the line before the two. I hope I'm not making that too confusing, but yes, we are going to score at one and 15 sixteenths of an inch on all four sides to where the base we did at the two inch mark. By scoring it one sixteenth of an inch smaller, it's going to widen the box. And so that's what we need to do on all four sides. Once we've got our lid nice and scored, we're gonna flip it over and on the back side here in the center, of all of the scoring lines, I cut a square that measures out at three and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches. This is going to be our center window, the opening so you could actually see what's in the box. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm gonna place it in the center and I'm gonna trace it. Then using a cutting mat, if you don't have a fancy cutting mat, you really don't need one. I like to use a cutting mat because I like to protect my surfaces. Dollar Tree has this two pack of cutting mats that I have invested in that I love that will work perfectly. Using an X-Acto knife, I'm gonna use a ruler as my guide and I'm gonna cut out the center window. To 
cover up the opening of the box, the window of our box, I'll be using these sheet protectors that you can get at Walmart. These are by Pen and Gear. And I had a 20 count on hand that the kids have had around that they use for reports or whatnot. And so these are perfect to cover up that window so you can see through it. For this part, I will be using some of the clear gel adhesive because I feel like it works a lot better than the tape. And so I'm just gonna outline the window and I cut a four by four inch piece of the sheet protector and I'm gonna just place it right down on top of the glue on the back side of the paper. Now, isn't that so easy peasy? Making a window to a goodie box like this, it looks so professional and amazing. Nobody's ever gonna know that you use sheet protectors to make this. I gave this window a few minutes to dry before I started folding in all of my scoring lines. And basically the lid to this box is being done the same way that we did the base. The only difference was the scoring measurements and adding the window to this. Really, if you don't wanna add a window to it, it's completely optional. I just think that it's a cool, fun touch to add it and it really doesn't take much time to do it. And again, just like I did with the base, I'm gonna cut the slits on each side rotate, cut these slits as well. And for the lid, I wanted to show you that you can very easily use this tacky glue and it works just as well. You just don't wanna be real generous with the glue because it will make the paper wet and you don't want your paper to warp. And so you wanna be a bit light-handed when using a liquid glue. So I'm gonna place a bit on each of the tabs here. Now seriously, how easy was that? It really doesn't get any easier than this and so budget friendly too. Now to fill these boxes, I am using this fudge kit by Carnation. This made one eight by 12 pan of fudge. And I would say my fudge is about an inch thick. I cut it into blocks. I placed it in just a Ziploc baggie because it was what I had on hand and I didn't feel like going to Walmart again just to look for maybe some goodie bags. You could use parchment paper if you wanted to. I was just a bit worried about the fudge drying out. So I figured my best bet was to go the Ziploc bag route. I placed it inside of the box with a bit of tissue paper just to kind of dress it up a bit, fill up some space and I decided that once these were closed off, just to top it off with a bit of twine and one of my twine bows, I found these galvanized tags at, I believe, Michael's for about a dollar, I think it was for six or eight pack, and they have the twine on them, and I thought that this was the perfect finishing touch to add a tag to these. I love DIYs like this because it's one of those DIYs that you can individualize. You can really get creative with, you can make it your own, and you can make it to suit your decor style or any decor style for that matter. I love this. I think that this is one of those handmade, homemade gifts that anybody is gonna love to receive. And I know I've said that before, but these really are one of my favorite gifts to give are these homemade gifts. They're easy to give to your neighbors, to your coworkers, to the teachers at your child's school or your school. It's just easy to make and you can do it for such a budget friendly price. And so in my case, I bought four boxes of these boxes of fudge, spent $20 on them, and I already had a ton of cardstock on hand already. Cardstock and scrapbooking paper is so budget friendly. You can get a package, like I said, for $2, and you can buy a decorative scrapbooking paper at Hobby Lobby for for a dollar, which is a great buy. And so you can really get creative with this. You can make it your own. You can put your own touch on it which is something that I think a lot of people really cherish and love this time of year. I hope you all enjoyed today's paper crafting DIY. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you all want to continue seeing more of these budget friendly, easy paper crafting ideas, let me know in the comments below because I go off of your feedback and I'll bring you more. Let's make sure to get this video to 5,000 likes because each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget and bye for now, everybody.